Have you ever applauded a television show? Yeah! If not, you will after hearing these musical numbers. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest original songs in TV. Lately we can tell that she's just going through the motion. through the motion. somehow. For this list, we're taking a look at comical musical performances that tie into the plot of a TV episode. Daddy, why did you eat my fries? I bought them and they were mine. General parodies of musical genres are fine, but more specific parodies like The Simpsons See My Vest, See My Vest, made from real gorilla chest, Family Guy's freaking FCC song, There's no negotiation with the fellas at the freaking FCC, or George Costanza's answering machine message on Seinfeld aren't really original songs. Believe it or not, George isn't at home, please leave a message at the beep. So they're being left off the list. We've also excluded songs from variety shows because that's a list for another day. They're the fellas at the freaking FCC. Number 10, Guy Love, Scrubs. Welcome to Sacred Heart. Scrubs went all out in this rousing musical episode with songs worthy of Broadway. Among the many hilarious original songs, the episode's signature number is Guy Love as Turk and JD proclaim their bromance in a totally manly way. Sometimes you're better off not knowing, but this isn't one of those times. These friends are so close they're practically married, sharing matching bracelets and openly hugging in public. Guy love, that's all it is. Guy love, he's mine, I'm his. Some people jump to the conclusion that they're gay, but JD and his chocolate bear couldn't care less what others think. Though I'm proud to call you chocolate bear. They're best buds, and they aren't afraid to show the world how much they adore each other. The clever lyrics are met with a sincere melody, making for the ultimate song about platonic love. You're the only man who's ever been inside of me. Number nine, Muffin Top, 30 Rock. Everyone knows the most delicious part of the muffin. It's the top. What do you get when a comedy writer marries a composer? Well, if you're anything like Tina Fey and hubby Jeff Richmond, you get some of the funniest TV songs this side of Saturday Night Live. You're weirding me out. One of the first and most memorable musical moments in 30 Rock's history was the dance pop techno hybrid known as Muffin Top. Checking out my sweet hips, my sugar coated berry lips. With lyrics that are cleverly an innuendo for something, this Jenna Maroney jam just barely beats out Tracy Jordan's novelty party song, Werewolf Bar Mitzvah. Werewolf Bar Mitzvah, spooky, scary, boys becoming men, men becoming wolves. Faye and Richmond's creative partnership carried over from 30 Rock to Faye's next project, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Unbreakable, they alive, damn it, it's a miracle. And if you're anything like us, Pinot Noir will be stuck in your head for days. You're welcome. Pinot Noir. Number eight, in the moonlight, do me, Modern Family. Haley says that Dylan is a musician. While Dylan has a good heart and truly cares for his girlfriend, he's not the kind of guy you'd want dating your teenage daughter. This is a. Uh actually a song I wrote for Haley. Just when it looks like he's won over Haley's parents, the boneheaded slacker makes the mistake of serenading his lady with a song he wrote. The moon is shining on your face. In the Moonlight starts off as a moving love ballad with lyrics that are suitable for the whole family. I just wanna do you, do you, do you wanna do me, do me. As Dylan goes on, however, he reminds everyone that young men only have one thing on their minds. She's so not going. Not a chance in hell. Phil and Claire may never approve of Dylan, but even they have to admit that his music is undeniably infectious. Baby, you could do me, do me. Man, I will do you, do you. Number seven, Spanish 101 rap, Community. We guarantee this is the catchiest song about disco spiders there is. Me llamo Tibon, la araña discoteca. Though the lyrics are complete nonsense, anyone who's taken a beginner Spanish class has had to learn how to ask for the library's location or wanted to know the word for beer. Manteca, bigote, gigante, big 
pequeño. Cabeza es nieve, cerveza es bueno. Over the years, the minds behind Community proved they could play around with any genre or musical style. From the group number Daydream Extravaganza, we're gonna finally be fine. We're gonna finally be fine. To Troy and Abed's modern holiday carol about secretly enjoying Christmas as Jehovah's Witnesses. Going deep, cover past enemy lines, making everybody think I'm on the Christmas side. Rocking warm sweaters, hanging big ass lights. If the fat man can see me, you always gotta look right. But it was this moment during the end credits of the show's second episode that showed us Troy and Abed's amazing chemistry, cemented their friendship, and hinted at the musical comedy to come. Yeah, boy, boy, yeah. What? It's 2009. Word. Number six, the most beautiful girl in the room, Flight of the Concords. I can tell the you of the most beautiful girl in the room. Jermaine and Brett are either the coolest guys in the room or the biggest dorks. Either way, Sally's definitely the prettiest girl in the room, which Jermaine asserts through this Emmy-nominated song, which emulates Prince's sexy vibe. And when you're on the street, depending on the street, I bet you were definitely in the top three. Good-looking girls on the street. Flight of the Concords is such a humorous musical duo because their songs are endlessly witty, smart, and offbeat in all the right ways, while still feeling improvised. How did they get a hot like that? We'll party like it's good one day. The most beautiful girl is no exception, as Jermaine expresses his desire to take Sally back to his place and even to buy her certain skewered dishes. The most beautiful girl I have ever seen with a kebab. The tune is equal parts funny and tender, although Brett ultimately cock blocks his roommate. Hey, Brett. That's just Brett. Turn the light off, Brett. Fortunately, Sally returns, allowing Jermaine to imagine what business time would be like with her. It's business time. Number five, let's go to the mall. How I Met Your Mother. How about I sing you a song? Although nothing suits us like a suit, we simply can't resist a trip to the mall. As hard as Robin Scherbatsky tries to conceal her darkest secret, the truth eventually comes out. I wish it was porn, it would be less embarrassing. She used to be, wait for it, a teenage pop star in Canada. Let's go to and this hilarious music video is drenched in 80s culture, even though Robin Sparkles didn't break out until the 90s, since Canada can be a little bit behind the times. This is the 90s. Why does it look like 1986? The 80s didn't come to Canada till like 93. Let's Go to the Mall epitomizes just how ridiculous 80s music videos were, complete with tacky clothing, neon lighting, and don't forget the robot. Nevertheless, you'll have a hard time getting those catchy lyrics out of your head. Oh. Number four, Smelly Cat, Friends. Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat. The incomparable Phoebe Buffay and her guitar gave us numerous memorable songs over the years, but Smelly Cat ended up being one of the best running gags in one of the most seminal sitcoms of the 90s. Smelly Cat, what are they feeding you? Everybody! While the song's lyrics are beyond silly, a record producer sees potential for a music video. It's not your fault. Of course, Phoebe, with her questionable talents, doesn't get to provide her own vocals. Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat! Oh my god! I know. I sound amazing. Later, Smelly Cat gets sold as a kitty litter jingle. Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat. Problem order in the litter box. Although the jingle bitch takes all the credit. I played Smelly Cat for the people of my old ad agency. They went nuts. Even if Smelly Cat is primarily treated as a joke, it actually ends up providing a bittersweet link between Phoebe and her runaway father. Who make up songs? Well, no, just, just that one. But it was stupid. Number three, you've got a lot to see. Family Guy. You've got a lot to see. Seth MacFarlane is quite a musical guy, and he likes to show off his abilities as a writer and a singer whenever he can. And we do love hearing his dulcet tones. Contrary to popular belief, they're made of marzipan. The setup for this particular song? Brian's trying to convince the old lady he's been hanging out with for community service to leave her house for the first time in 30 years. There's so much you've missed in the last 30 years. What comes next is a rousing and typically clever big band number about all that's changed in that time. McFarlane and composer Walter Murphy did such an impressive job with the tune, it won them an Emmy for Outstanding 
outstanding music and lyrics in 2002. A word like redneck is a step too far. The proper term is country music star. We're guessing You Have AIDS did not get the same consideration from the Academy. Not HIV, but full-blown AIDS. Number two, Kyle's mom's a bitch, South Park. How about we sing? Kyle's mom is a stupid bitch in D minor. In a show full of inappropriate music, this is a prime example of Trey Parker and Matt Stone's warped genius. Kyle's mom's a bitch, she's a big fat bitch, she's the biggest bitch in the whole wide world, she's a stupid bitch, if there ever was a bitch, she's a bitch too, all the boys and girls. Eric Cartman has quite possibly the foulest mouth you've ever heard on a kid of elementary school age. And he puts his curse word vocab to good use in this song, ripping on his friend Kyle Broflovsky's mom for ruining Christmas. It isn't being sensitive to the Jewish community! You are the Jewish community! After introducing the popular polka tune in the episode Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh, Cartman reprises it in the South Park film in a much more grandiose and vulgar rendition, spreading the hate to other kids in various countries and using the B word 56 times in the span of 71 seconds. Monday she's a bitch, on Tuesday she's a bitch, and Wednesday to Saturday she's a bitch. Hey, what can we say? Kyle's mom's a bitch. Super bitch is at it again. Don't call my mom a bitch, Cartman! Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. <laughs> Would break down racial barriers and maybe be a crossover hit. It ain't hit. easy being white. It ain't easy being brown. All this pressure to be bright. I got children all over town. Day man, that's it. Day man. Oh, fighter of the night, man. Oh, champion of the sun. Oh, I do I've got some. Hot love on the hot love highway and going home cause my baby's gone. She's dead. She's not dead. Number one, we do The Simpsons. Who controls the British crown? Who keeps the metric system down? We do, we do. From We Put the Spring in Springfield to the monorail song, The Simpsons have given us some of the best musical numbers in television history. But Main Street's still all cracked and broken. Sorry, Mom, the mob is spoken. But we gotta admit, the stonecutters know how to get our toes a tapping. Homer is part of a secret organization along the lines of the Freemasons. And you can't join the stonecutters because it's too exclusive. And it turns out these guys have been pulling the strings on a lot of goings on in the world. Who leaves Atlantis off the maps? Who keeps the Martians under wraps? We do. This Emmy-nominated song was not originally in the episode Homer the Great at all, but then the writers got together, listed off a bunch of things that bugged them, and the Stonecutters song was born. Does anybody else wish they could be part of an organization like this? We do. do you agree with our list? There's nothing gay about it. What do you think is the funniest TV song? For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Au revoir.